Good morning. <laughs> Happy 3rd of July. <laughs> it's almost the 4th. It's almost the 4th. So we'll have the patriotic song at the end of the service today. Um, and I don't have any time to mention it at the end, but at the end of the last hymn is God Save the State. And in England, for the last 70 years, however long, they've been singing God Save the Queen. And in a few years, they'll have to switch it to God Save the King. And it's going to sound funny to them. <laughs> so, Oh, we are also celebrating today as Armed Forces Sunday. You're allowed to celebrate it pretty much any time you want during the year. And so we pick today. So, all right. Our opening hymn is number 966, Before You, Lord, We Bow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church. 
in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The intro it is found on the insert in your bulletin. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out the speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> to God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven Proclaimed at Jesus' birth We praise and bless you, Father Your holy name we sing Our thanks for your great glory Lord God, our heavenly King To you, O soul the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace that by preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 66. 
Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her counseling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants. And he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Galatians 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each one will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of good, doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirits, brother. This is the word of the Lord. according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, 
your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we will wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know that this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Apostles' Creed is on page 207. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our sermon hymn is Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying. It is number 826. 826.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Why would St. Paul warn us not to grow weary of doing good? Probably because he was growing weary of doing good. How can I say this? The man wanted to die prematurely. And I'd say that's a pretty big clue. Philippians 1, to 25, Paul reveals, If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. St. Paul did a lot of good and was imprisoned for it, beaten for it, slandered for it, bore all insult because of it. Can we blame the guy if he was a little weary of doing good? It brought him a lot of pain. Our older members, are you a little weary of doing good? You've done good things for the church for decades, but look where we are now. In the last 40 years, we've done tons of good, but we've been declining. There weren't 200 kids in our school, all members of Trinity. There were 59 students, very few who are Lutheran of any kind. We didn't have 25 kids confirmed this year. We had two. And by the way, don't gripe about having only two confirmands. Many Lutheran churches had none this year. So give thanks that we had any at all. We don't have two services on Sunday anymore. We have one. If you compare 1982 to 2022, you're bound to ask yourself, what good did all our good work do seeing where we are now? The temptation and sin would be to grow weary and give up. But what does Paul say? And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. You reap what you sow is another part of this text. If you look at 1982 and compare it to 2022, or God forbid you compare it to 1962 with 2022, and you get depressed and angry, then you're punching at the wind with your fists, accomplishing nothing, or worse, you're sowing your depression and anger among others and reaping what you sowed, more depression and anger. Is it 1962? No, I'm here and I was not born until 1971. <laughs> Is it 1982? No, I was in Roman Catholic sixth grade in 1982 and was as happy as a clam. Now I have a master's degree and I'm fully Lutheran. Is it 1999 when I was ordained? No, I've been a pastor now for 23 years and I'm 50 years old. I can't get back the vigor I had in 1999. I have bad news for you folks. It's the year of our Lord 2022 and there's nothing we can do about it. Remembering 1962 is disastrous. Remembering 1982 doesn't do any good. Remembering 1999 isn't helpful at all. We are in 2022 AD and we have to behave like it is now instead of clinging to the memories of past greatness 
that just make you angry and depressed. Weariness is a problem because it leads to apathy and inaction, or worse, giving up completely. The past greatness of Trinity Lutheran Church and school is a hindrance to progress, not an aid. There's remembering the past like a human being, and then there's wallowing in the past like a pig in mud, trampling on the pearls we have cast before us. What did we have in 1962 that we still have now? We have God our Father as our gracious creator and sustainer of life. What did we have in 1982 that we still have now? We have God's Son, Jesus Christ, the pearl of great price, who died for our sins and rose for our justification. And what did we have in 1999 that we still have now? We have the Holy Spirit to lead us into all good works and to make us holy. What's different about 1962 compared to 2022? 2022 is a lot more violent. What's different about 1982 compared to 2022? Our society has been sexualized to an incredible degree. What's different about 1999 compared to 2022? Our society does not consider church to be an important part of our lives. We're not as safe as we were in 1962. We're not as pure as we were in 1982. We don't consider church as important as we did in 1999. All three of the things, apart from the other unfavorable comparisons to our past, are enough to make one weary of doing good. But if we do not grow weary of doing good, in due season we will reap if you do not give up, so says St. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to give us that assurance of a great future, no matter how bad things might become in the present. We are in 2022. We can't change that unless we go home, turn off the lights, and hide under the covers until it's 2023, when things won't be any better. Deal with the now. Wear the pearls of God like a human. Do not trample the pearls in the mud like filthy pigs. There were only two confirmands. What are you going to do about it to encourage more youth to take the plunge into God's grace and sacrament? There are only four ladies in our LWML. What are you going to do about it? Maybe join and strengthen it? There were only 59 students in our school last year. What are you going to do about it? Have you told anyone with kids about our school? You might try. The public schools have become indoctrination centers for leftist ideology and are trying to confuse even kindergartners about whether they are a boy or a girl. It shouldn't be so hard to compete with that. It's 2022. We're smaller. What are you going to do about it? We have an excellent message, a pearl of great price, if you will, that we can share with our community to give them hope, purity, life, and eternal life. If we sow these things, we will reap those things and by consequence grow our church. First Peter 3, now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. 
Opposition to our pearl of great price message is only going to grow. Being slandered for our faith is already here. People call the pro-lifers evil and the baby killers saints. Being reviled for our faith is already here. But our pearl of great price, that is, is that for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We have free salvation. We have total relief from guilt because we're forgiven everything, not because we make up for our bad with good works, but because we simply believe Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead and that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We don't believe this by our own power, which is too weak to believe it on our own. No, we have the helper, the Holy Spirit, who guides us into all truth and comforts us through this life until we are sown in the ground in our graves and God reaps us to eternal life because that's what we were sown with in the first place. Calling ourselves smaller is a very negative outlook. It invites defeat. Calling our world in 2022 more violent, sexualized, and hopeless should only be all the more reason to share the hope that fills us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. People in 2022 are hurting. They hate themselves. They're miserable. Jesus offers healing, love, and self-confidence the very things these hurting people need but are hostile to receiving. That Christians are self-confident, feel loved, have hope for eternity, and lead holier lives just drives the sinful world crazy. They would rather slander and revile the pearl of Jesus Christ rather than enjoy the love, hope, and peace we enjoy. They think they can't have these things. We have to convince them otherwise because they are not happy and they are miserable even if they won't recognize those facts. The Jesus of 1962 was fantastic and the church grew tremendously. The Jesus of 1982 was great and the church was still strong. The Jesus of 1999 had lost none of his glory, but was starting to lose members. The Jesus of 2022 is the eternal Son of God who loved us to the point of death, even death on a cross. But we're all but in a crisis mode, and churches are being attacked, and some even burned down. It's all the same Jesus. It's all the same Holy Spirit. The world never changes. Roman society in the first century was violent and extremely sexualized. But Christianity grew like gangbusters back then because Christians showed love and concern for people they were not related to. And despite all that good, The first century Roman Christians were being fed to lions and being torn apart by bears in the Colosseum. That didn't stop them. If you want to get into comparisons, the early church had it much rougher than we do today. And they persevered and they reaped what would become the largest faith in the world found almost in every country an island of the world. Of the 68,000 or so people in Oshkosh, 40,800 of them, 60%, are unchurched. They don't know Jesus. They don't know salvation. 
We need to think in terms of us having 40,000 potential new members without stealing a single sheep from other Christians. How can we not get 1,000 out of 40,000? And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. There are over 40,000 people in Oshkosh who have no hope for the future and just live day to day. They are hurting. They need the Savior Jesus Christ that we have. What are you going to do about it? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand for the prayer of the church. O Lord of the harvest, at your son's instruction we pray that you would continue to send laborers into your vineyard, that the plentiful harvest may be gathered into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, O God, you sent Jesus to preach your word, and he likewise sent forth the apostles in the 72. Grant us faithful pastors who receive your word with thanksgiving and deliver it without fear, even when wolves threaten to devour them, and who trust that in the Lord their labor is not in vain. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, your Son sent the 72 with the charge to enter homes to proclaim peace and declare the coming of your kingdom. Grant our homes to be places in which your peace dwells, that husbands and wives love and honor one another, children are nurtured in fear and faith toward your name, and your kingdom comes among us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, in this sin-sick world, nations engage in violence, injustice, and wrongdoing. Give peace, we pray, to all nations, that all people may enjoy the comforting goodness of your will being done on earth. Hear our prayers on behalf of all who make, administer, and judge our laws, and provide opportunities for your gospel to be proclaimed without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, in your Son you have borne the burdens of all mankind. Mend the wounds of all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Look with mercy upon Hope, Marge, Patty Ann, Levi, Judy, Robert, Paul, Pat, Reverend Jerry, Betty, Mary, and all for whom we pray. Grant their physicians knowledge and wisdom as they seek the best treatments for their patients' suffering. According to your gracious will, restore these servants with strength and healing now, and grant them patience to await the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Father, keep our hearts from greed, that we may joyfully support your church and those who serve us in your name. Keep us from pride of heart that delights more in what we do than in what you have done. Accept with our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thankfulness the millions of Americans who give so generously of their life and labor in times of national conflict, particularly the family members of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard. Lord, in your mercy. Give strength to our chaplains who serve in the line of duty, in the wounded warrior wards, and in our military hospitals as they provide pastoral care to hurting and wounded veterans and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, we pray for the nation of Ukraine that as it suffers war, you would give them strength and through your Son, Jesus Christ, give them faith in you that you will get them through this. We ask for victory for the Ukrainians uh, over the evil that has unjustly invaded them. And Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray for our school, Trinity School, that during the summer the kids don't forget everything they learned last year. And 
<laughs> that uh, we find a new teacher for the second grade and that we have a good school year next year. Lord, in your mercy. How awesome are your deeds, O oh Lord. You have planted us and directed us to pray that you would send workers into your vineyard. You have answered that prayer through your Son and his church. As your kingdom draws nearer each day, teach us to boast only in the cross of our Lord, Jesus Christ, rejoicing that our names are written in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord's Prayer is on page 209. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Help is needed for the school supply collection this fall. We actually need someone to be in charge of it or to coordinate it. Um, Mary Luther is, is willing to help someone do this, but we need somebody to actually uh, be in, in charge of it. Um, the school supplies go to the children in our school who have trouble affording school supplies. Um, the various big box stores put things on drastic sale at random during the summer and fall. So sometimes you can pick up notebooks for a penny and things like that. So anyway, uh, subscriptions are being taken for the Lutheran Witness, a magazine from our church body. At $15.96 per year, $1.33 per issue, it's a bargain. It includes features, stories, commentaries that interpret the contemporary world from a Lutheran Christian perspective. Use the Lutheran Witness envelopes on the turnstiles in the welcome area. Deadline is July 11th. I didn't know we had turnstiles. We do? Oh, okay, well, all right. Maybe I don't know what a turnstile is. <laughs> Uh, script cards are available at the church office during the week while school is on summer vacation. And of course, you can buy them after church on Sundays. I tell you, I don't even buy enough script cards. Every time I spend or use my own credit card at Walmart, I'm losing money for the school <laughs> and for the church. Because if I just used a script card, they would get 4% or whatever the percent is on Walmart cards. Uh, same is true for all the other cards. They're so easy to use, and it's, it's easy money. Uh, Trinity is participating in the Fill the Fridge Challenge at the Hope Fridge behind Wagner's Meat Market. The day we picked is Sunday, July 24th. We need food donations. You can also donate with script cards. Leave them in the gray box by the church office. Any questions, you may contact Jamie Gibbs. So when I've driven by the Hope fill the, the Hope Fridge behind Wagner's Market, it looks like half of it is a refrigerator and freezer, and the other half is um, like plastic storage boxes that are clear with food in them that I don't think are necessarily refrigerated. Um, you can, of course, donate grocery store script cards to help us buy food for this fill the fridge. Um, the Voice of Trinity is available to pick up as well as the new portals of prayer. Um, the new portals of prayer start in July. Oh, it is July, okay. So, uh, <laughs> but be sure to pick up the Voice of Trinity too. It, it's available on the Welcome Center counter, I believe. The youth are leaving this Thursday morning for Missouri Synod Youth Convention. Um, especially if you're in a little rural Missouri Synod church where there aren't very many kids, it's really amazing to go to a big city where there's thousands of Missouri Synod kids all worshiping together and, and Bible studying together. And even for us in a big city where we do have kids, it's a neat experience to um, be in a group that large. All right. 
Our closing hymn is God Bless Our Native Land, which is number 965. Stand through storm and night. 